have a few cases of internal hernias. Oh no. So I top of I Victor, know. <laughs> Victor, make sure you scroll slowly so I can actually see them. <laughs> okay. Um, I, I can scroll through them all day and, and it still gives me a headache trying to figure out what's going on. So <laughs> uh, if you're like me, this article will help you. Uh, it's Radiographics 2016 by a Japanese group showing all the different kinds of internal hernia. So one here is on the diagram, the periduodenal. Two here, you can have a mesenteric defect and a small bowel mesentery related one. Similarly with the greater momentum, you can have a lesser sac hernia, transverse mesocolon hernia here. And uh, this one, pericecal hernia, these can be kind of cute. Uh, sigmoid mesocolon can also have hernias. And then these are extremely rare, this falciform ligament hernia, pelvic internal hernia. Okay, so here, is uh, first case. So she's a 27 year old woman. I think there's a some history of anorexia. Um, so any thoughts? Can you scroll through the axial some more? Yeah. Um, we do have some guesses. So Githanjali is saying a left paraduodenal. Yeah. So uh, it's my first time using visits to show these cases and I think some of them are being interpolated, but here, yeah, this is a periduodenal hernia, and you can actually see that part of the colon is being herniated through this defect as well. This is the transverse colon coming into the defect, and so this colon was actually volvulized. Um, at surgery, they found that the small bowel was entirely in the right upper quadrant, and it seems kind of left slash midline-ish, but um, but it was emanating underneath the transverse colon, and um, they they went from laparoscopy to laparotomy and found uh, there's a malrotation of the right colon and a dense lad span extending from the third portion of the duodenum to the mid portion of the transverse colon, and as such there was a complete volvulus of the colon. So. I don't know if there's a delay, but for, like when you're scrolling, I'm I'm only seeing like a couple of images. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Can you go through the axial again? Okay, let's go through the axial one more time here. Can you, you, or even the coronal? I don't know. The um, maybe unlink them or something. Okay, now I. Can you see the axial here? Yeah, but it's like skipping, it seems like every 10 images or something. <sighs> okay. Maybe it's That's just too me. Bad. No, I was, I was hoping using this software would be easier to show these cases. But, um, Omar is saying it's for him well, too. Maybe. Although yeah. apparently for all the pros in the group, they already got, they got the diagnosis, even on those few images. <laughs> I'm getting most yeah, of the images. Well, um, okay, Jesse's getting most, most of them. So maybe it's just me. Okay. okay. Keep going. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, any anyone any other comments on this case? Okay. Nope. They said no contrast beyond the duodenum through the foramen of Winslow. Um, yeah. So there are two classic types here. There's one where you have herniation through the fossil lancet. In this scenario, you would have the IMA and the IMV along the anteromedial border. That if it's uh, right periduodenal hernia, usually you have the SMA and SMV on along the anterior medial border. Okay. All right. Okay, let's try this next case. Okay, can you guys see these? Yes. Okay, so 
scrolling down, you see these dilated loops of small bowel and it's like a notch here. Maybe something is tethering here. And this uh, sigmoid colon is also kind of narrowed in this segment right here. It almost looks like there's a little uh, hernia here. So this is indeed uh, another case of a hernia. And um, at surgery, they found that there was a, a bridge of tissue from the sigmoid colon to the retroperitoneum, and that all the small bowel was herniated through there. That's why, that's why we saw this narrowing here at the sigmoid colon and all the bowel seems to be emanating from that defect. So this isn't a particular mm -hmm. type of hernia? Yeah, this is not, not a classic kind of one of the ones that were shown previously. And I think most of the ones that we see here are often just related to some sort of um, adhesive band causing some internal hernia. Victor, that's what I've found too, is that if I try to like wrap my mind around what, you know, internal hernia it could be, a lot of times the op report's very unsatisfying because they'll just say like there was an adhesion and we cut it open, whatever. And so my impression now is the more, most important aspect is to identify if it's a closed loop and if there's any signs of ischemia, um, but you don't have to completely stress yourself out about like knowing which space it's going through because oftentimes it might not even be a true internal hernia, like in a mesenteric defect, it might be from a big Yeah, that's, that's our experience as well. Um, every time we want to call it an internal hernia, it ends up just being a closed obstruction from a adhesive band, it's not often classic. Okay, let's see, this person has this scan. Okay, let's see. So non-dilated small bowel, the left abdomen. So I think there are chats, but I can't see them. Uh, Amir was asking a question in general. He said, these are difficult to diagnose, especially to classify. What are the clinical implications if we just mention that there is obstruction and ischemia slash other complications? I think, um, I mean, what I would say I is that it's, it's, a, it's important that we were saying like the most important things are to see if it's a closed loop um, because yeah. that has a higher rate of ischemia. And then if you see any signs of ischemia, um, I don't personally think that there's much implication if you say it's X internal hernia versus just saying it's a closed loop. Um, but right. other people can chat in if they, they think there is. And yeah, Victor, you can, you can go back. Always, mm -hmm. Sorry. Go it's ahead. always more, uh, whenever we can be helpful, we always um, you know, try to tell them what the exact problem is, but often it's not going to be classic. And I think the most important thing is to emphasize that this is a surgical case and, and that they sh should go to surgery. I think if we can do that, then we're doing the patient a good service. But, you know, sometimes we just say that it looks like a, a small bowel obstruction or a large bowel obstruction and we don't really emphasize the severity or that this is a surgical case. If we can really um, identify that it is, then, then that's the most important thing that we can do. Like this case. Any Anyone I have an idea of what's turn eating? Maybe Perry Siegel. Yeah, so this looks like um, the ascending colon is edematous and there seems to be a defect here and, and that the you know, cecum is in the, in the mid portion of the abdomen and, and displaced. So uh, surgery, um, they found this closed loop obstruction of the ascending colon, which was tethered tightly by a band of momentum. They called this adhesive to the white line of Tolt. And I had to look up what the white line of Tolt was. <laughs> this is an avascular plane that the surgeon dissects that um, 
basically is connected to the ascending colon. And so this band of momentum is basically tethering it to the, to the to this white line of twelve, then causing the ascending colon to herniate through it. Okay, that's kind of a cute case. Um, here is a 71-year-old woman with left abdominal pain, and this is the last case I have of internal hernia. So, this is a more classic case. One of the ones that I showed in the diagram on the first slide. So I'll show it here as well. Any thoughts? Looks like Oh, so, Steve, Steve's here. Great. Steve, what do you think? I know. It's like bowel on the lesser sack. That's yeah, right. it looks like he flies right. bowel there in the lesser sack. So it's sack. kind of busy here. That's right. So if you only one way to get in there, it, it, the yeah, it's the distal ileum coming up here, herniating through the lesser sac. And so this is um, the you know, ileocecal valve here and the ascending colon. So this was a foramen of Winslow hernia. Winslow. They found that surgery of the cecum and ascending colon having herniated through foramen Winslow into the lesser sac and um, basically reduced. Okay, great. I have one last case here. It's not in hernia, but uh, this guy who came into the clinic with flank pain. So a little more than you would expect for atelectasis, and we thought this was a little suspicious, even though the um, presentation didn't seem to indicate that it would be. Right. The case of COVID causing flank pain, or at least we think that's what the symptoms are. Um, no, this is like uh, what Victoria showed last week, like some people people are presenting with just really abdominal pain or flank pain and you don't see much yeah. pain and then the lung basis show they have yeah, it's all been loaded. Yeah. Okay, that's all I have. Great.